All right, guys, my name is Desiree, of course. Uh, this is Precision TV. If you haven't subscribed, this is a good time because as I told you guys, this month, next month, next year, we have people coming to Precision TV to share their story. And you, I guess you have a story to share with us, with audience, with anybody who is following Precision TV. So today I have a surprise for you. Of course, as you see on our screen, we have our special guest today, whom I will want him to introduce himself. I know he been doing different things, doing a lot of things. Uh, Usman, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Desiree. All right. Uh, Osman is our guest today, and uh, I, I want you guys to follow and participate in the show while he will be uh, giving some hints, giving us some uh, decision that he were able to make uh, to make sure that he's doing what he's doing right now. Osman, uh, tell us about a little bit about you. Who are you? Introduce yourself so that we can start our show. Absolutely. Absolutely, okay. Desiree. So my name is Usman Diallo. And to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, I always tell people that I was born and I've, I've always been a dreamer, okay? I was born and raised in Africa, in Ivory Coast, Côte d'Ivoire. And uh, since I was the age of 10, I dreamed about coming to America. You know, my dad used to come to America and he would go to Washington, D.C. He would go to New York and he would take pictures and videos and then he would come home and then show us. Be like, man, this is Washington. You know, and I would see big cars, big street. And I'll say, man, <laughs> one day I will come to America. And I was having a conversation. My dad, my brothers, my sisters and my dad said, if you ever, gra whoever graduates from high school, you can decide wherever you wanna go. Once you graduate from high school, I'll pay for the tickets, you'll go, you can go study. So since I was 10, I dream, I said, man, if I, if I finish high school, I'm going to America, right? So I came here, I went to school because that's what everybody told me to do. Yeah. And one day I was, I was talking to a friend and I was like, man, I wanna be successful. I wanna do something really big with my life. What should I do? He said, you got to go to school, you got to get a good degree, and then you got to get a good job. So I did exactly that. I went to school, I got a degree in accounting, and then I graduated and I, and I couldn't get a job. And Desiree, I don't know if you remember, 2000, 2008, we had the, the economic recession in the country. So there, wasn't, there weren't a lot of jobs out there. I was looking for jobs, I couldn't get anything. And the only job I had was working in the call center. So I started working there and uh, long story short, left that job. And now I'm in the financial industry. And I really, I, what I really love is helping people understand how money works. Absolutely, absolutely. What interesting story that Usman has been through and dreaming like me, like you, like anybody else who, uh, who have this uh, American dream. Uh, so Usman, uh, before we go there, uh, are you by any chance married and have kids? Or? Yes, yes, I'm married, happily married uh, with three children. Uh, and uh, yeah, married, three children, no more. I have a 15-year-old, 9-year-old, and a 3-year-old, all boys. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I have, I have my hands full, especially right now with the pandemic going on. <laughs> amazing, amazing family. So uh, today we are going to cover uh, what you do uh, specifically. And uh, we are very happy that you were able to share some of the story, even if I will still uh, go back a little bit about it. But uh, tell us about... Uh, basically, how did you end up going to financial uh, industry uh, while there is a lot of things out here that people are doing, especially everyone who want to go to medical school, everyone who go to IT, everyone, everyone who want to do something that uh, he feels the dream will be true, uh, will be true tomorrow or next day? Yes, yes, that's that's, and that's a very good question, Desiree. I, I love that you asked that question. Well, the reason why I got involved is this. Uh, one day I was at my desk, right? I was about to have my last son and I was working at a place, I wasn't happy. 
you know, I was struggling financially, you know, my wife was making more money than me. And I was like, man, uh, am I even financially ready to have this child? You know, what if I have this child and I can't even make sure I can take care of them, right? And a friend of me sent me a message. He said, hey, I have this friend. He's been in financial services for a while and I think we should get together. So I met the guy and he gave me this book. I don't even know if I have the book somewhere here. And the name of the book was Act Free Retirement. And the book explained how wealthy people invest their money. You know, how you can use life insurance, how you can use different investment products to transfer generational wealth. So when I read the book, I came, I'm, I'm not a big reader, you know, <laughs> I'm very slow when I read, but I was so interested about this book. I read the book in like two days. And after I saw the book, I was like, man, I need to go ahead and tell, yes, I need to go ahead and tell everybody about how they can protect themselves, how they can protect the family. You know, so many times, especially in our community, when someone passes away, we always do what? GoFundMe, or we ask family and friends, hey, we need money for the funeral, mm -hmm. this and that. And a lot of it is because me, I wasn't educated about life insurance. I didn't know. So when I find out about it, I say, I want to go out there and educate as many people as possible. Because to me, that's the cheapest way to transfer generational wealth. And there's one thing that I always say. You know, not everybody is going to be rich, but nobody deserves to be poor. Exactly. Uh, this is what uh, I want. Uh, the reason why I invite uh, Osman today, it's because uh, uh, especially our African community, not only from Ivory Coast yes. or Rwanda or Congo or anywhere, uh, many of our immigrants are ignoring, uh, like neglect the uh, life insurance, uh, going there to financial uh, um, company, uh, what really do you guys provide or why, uh, I mean, what, what, what is your most um, uh, client, customers? Okay, so if you, look at the, um, the, if you look at the insurance industry right now, uh, there is a problem and I'll tell you what it is the majority of the people that are in the business that are helping families, right? The majority of them are Caucasian male and they're in the 50, and they're in the sixties, right? It's nothing wrong to be Caucasian. It's nothing wrong to be a male, mm -hmm. but it's an older generation and it's not a diverse generation. Mm -hmm. So the people telling other people about life insurance are not people like look like me. They don't look like you. They don't look like you. They don't look like me. The, you know, so what we wanted to do as a company, we wanted to be a diverse company and we wanted to have a, a company where we have a lot of young people going out there and educating the minorities, especially minorities communities. So the people that the product and services that we offer is life insurance, you know, helping people understand how to use life. If something happens to them, you know, the, the family will be protected financially. And I give you an example. There is a lady, my brother-in-law, He's in the business. Uh, he's working with the business too. We, we're in business together. Three years ago, Desiree, there was a lady. Uh, she has three girls. Uh, the, the oldest girl is going to college. And uh, she, we talked to her about life insurance. She did not want to hear anything. She was like, I don't, I don't think I need, because most people think they're going to live for. <laughs> do, do, you, do you know anybody who's never going to die? I don't know if anybody who's never going to die. Anybody who die. <laughs> But, but uh, finally, we were able to convince her to get a policy, and she got a policy. Desiree, two weeks ago, my brother-in-law gave me a call. He said, you will never believe what happened. I said, what? He said, that there was a lady I talked to three years ago. She didn't want to buy life insurance, and um, they just found out that the lady got cancer. And then two weeks after her cancer, she died. Mm. She didn't, have a lot of, she didn't have a lot of money for the life insurance policy. We were able to get her a $50,000. But that $50,000 now, at least it's going to be there for the dignity of her family. Her family doesn't have to go beg for money to bury the, to bury the mother, right? They don't have to go ask money around for people to have money for the funeral. So when that happened to me, that was just a conf confirmation to me that I'm doing the right thing. Because in our industry, every time you talk to people about insurance, they don't even want to listen to you. But when something happened like this and a family member dies, 
that's when people realize that, man, I'm so glad that you, you were able to listen. You, I'm so glad that even though I was stubborn, you were patient and you helped me get a life insurance policy. So that's what we want to do. We want to go out there and help as many families as possible, especially right now with the pandemic. You won't believe it. Last year in July, we, we did with our company, we sold about 3,000 3, uh, life insurance policy. This year, we, in July, we, already, we sold over 7,000 policies because people are, people are starting to realize that, man, this is important, especially with COVID going on. What if my husband dies of COVID? You know, what am I going to do? What if my wife dies, dies of COVID? And I have kids, I have children. Who's going to take care of them? So our, our mission as a company is to help minorities, communities, communities of, of colors, middle-income America. So that's what we do. Uh, coming back to that question of people increasing by buying uh, new policies, mm -hmm. uh, what, what is the big number, what is the majority of those people buying the new uh, policies? Majority of the people buying policy, Hispa the Hispanic community, the black communities. The, these are the, our biggest market, you know, uh, because like I was telling you, in, in the insurance industry, the average age of an agent is a 59-year-old male, right? Within our company, the average age of agents is a 33-year-old Hispanic female. So we, we don't look like the typical insurance company. <laughs> if you go to State Farm and all this company, they don't look like what we look like because we've, we found out that we need to, for us to be able to reach a different market, we have to recruit people that come from a different market. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, are we still insist to, the, uh, to that question when I say, uh, did, did you have uh, maybe a statistic of people from Africa, specifically immigrant, mm -hmm. who became uh, maybe a U.S. citizen or you are uh, here as a resident? Uh, how many or uh, how is your statistic uh, within your company, uh, mm -hmm. people from uh, Africa, uh, using uh, that, uh, uh, life insurance or any other insurance that you guys are providing right now? Mm -hmm. I don't have any specific statistics for, for that as far as how many Africans are using life insurance. That would be a good thing to have. But uh, I tell you what, I've, I realized that in our community, it's a big need. It's a big need in the African community because I see so many of my brothers and sisters, they're working hard every day. They're working two jobs, three jobs. They're sending money back home. But, you know, what happens if something happens to them and they can't send their money back home anymore? Do they have anything in plan? Do they, do, they, do they have anything in place? Do they have another plan? So I see that it's so important to educate the community. And a lot of times people are open to the information. It's just that nobody's going out there and talking to them. Mm -hmm. All right, Osman, uh, taking this step, going helping families to understand what's going to be next, what's going to happen to their life. It's the most uh, beautiful thing that uh, anybody else can say. Thank you for that. But uh, jumping to the question, uh, the reason, I I'm going back uh, to the reason why you end up coming to the financial uh, industry. Uh, yeah. there, there are where I, I broke. I was broke. I was red on your I was, I was broke. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you up. Go ahead. You ask it for $2, raise for $2, and they yes. kick you out. Uh, how did you feel? Did you feel like you're going to go to your dream and have your company now running? No, no. I, I felt miserable. Uh, like I said, I was, you know, I graduated from school. I couldn't get a job in accounting because that was my degree. And I was working in a call center making, you know, uh, $14 an hour, you know, not bad, but I wanted to make more. And the company was asking me to do more. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm willing to do ex to go the extra mile, but would you guys be willing to give me a raise? And they say, yes, we're going to give you a raise. And one month later, no raise, two months, six months, a year. And I just got tired. And it got to the point where, you know, one day I received a phone call because I was, I was doing customer service and, uh, I felt like I wasn't supposed to take care of the call, so I transferred to another department. So when my manager found out, they called me in and they told me that they had to let me go. And you know, and to me, I was like, 
I'm asking you for $2. I've been with this company for six years and you can't give me a $2 raise and the best thing you want to do is fire me. So that was the worst thing at the time, but it ended up being the best thing that ever happened to me because it showed me that no jobs is ever safe. Whatever you're doing right now, you know, I tell people, make sure that you have a backup plan. So I decided to, because I was broke when I lost my job, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any savings. I say, I want to learn about money. I want to learn about how to invest, how to save money, because I never want to be in that situation again. Mm, that, that's a good thing to, uh, to, to know. I think today I will be able to take some classes from you. As I go into that uh, question again, um, I want to uh, be very uh, focusing on uh, our African brothers and sisters who still feel like, oh, insurance is not necessary. Uh, it's okay if I die, I die. If I, you know, people are still neglecting this what your company uh, should be doing or are you guys doing right now to uh, make uh, these people understand more about the beauty of the uh, having insurance? So what we're doing right now with the pandemic going on, we're having workshops. It's, it's a virtual workshop where we invite people that want to learn more about our company. So in the, in the workshop, we, has, we explain the different type of products, the different type of life insurance that we use because when most people think about life insurance, they think about something that they have to die to use. If they don't die, nothing. But today in the life insurance industry, there are products that you can get. If you don't die, let's just say you, you get sick and you have COVID-19 or you have any type of chronic illness, terminal illness, you have some type of cancer and uh, you only have two years to live, you can start using the money from the life insurance policy to take care of your bills. And people don't know about that, you know? There are life insurance policies that let's just say you, you, you have the policies for 30 years and nothing happens to you. The insurance company give you all of your money back. But, but a lot of people don't know that. So what we do is that every day of a workshop, we invite people through Zoom and then we teach people about those products and services. And if they're interested, we help them uh, and protect the family. Mm -hmm. that's uh that's something uh, something good because i feel like uh many people doesn't care doesn't still feel like mm -hmm. oh i have to buy insurance yeah but what's gonna happen next because when you see people who are buying the um auto insurance and mm -hmm. life insurance and you compare put on a scale the life insurance will go down. <laughs> yeah. Nobody want to uh, pay for, um, for his life instead of paying uh, for his car. Uh, I want to know why is it because maybe they don't know anything about life insurance or is it because it's not mandatory or maybe a state law or federal law? What, what, what do you think, what, what, what is the reason behind that? Well, the reason why I, I believe people don't buy life insurance, number one, is because people don't really understand, you know, the, the stress that they can have on, on, on the family if something happens to them. You know, people, people never seen a situation where, like, a, a, the breadwinner of the family passes away, and now the family has to, they have to leave the house because they can't afford the, 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 the mortgage, or they have to move to a different place. Now, now your, your wife, your, your ex-wife, because you passed away, or your ex-husband has to go and marry somebody else to take care of your children because you didn't have life insurance. You didn't have something in place. Your children maybe were supposed to go to college, but because now you, 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 you passed away, there is no money. Now your children have to struggle and go to, go to financial struggle. So I think it's a lack of education. And also, like you said, because car insurance, you have to do it. It's against the law not to have car insurance. You know, mortgage insurance, you have to do it. If you don't do it, you can get in trouble. Life insurance, because it's, it's, it's your choice, most people don't really see it as the foundation of them building the financial house. So it's a combination of, of a lack of education, a lack of people going out there and educating, people, educating families, and also... So a combination of that and also the fact that because it's not 
uh, against the law not to have life insurance, people don't think it's important until something bad happens to them. All right, all right, guys. This is Precision TV, of course. My name is Desiree. We are here with uh, Usman uh, explaining us, telling us about uh, what he does, what he helps people uh, to achieve, to, bu to buy the insurance. But also, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, it's Precision TV. Precision TV, go there on YouTube, just type Precision TV, then subscribe. You're going to have many people as Usman sharing their story uh, with what they do to support uh, their people, to support their loved ones, to support the community that they're coming from, uh, like the way you do. Usman, uh, coming back to the people from Africa, uh, many of them, many of us, we are working hard, two, three jobs, one job to maintain and to pay the bills and to do whatever we want to do. But many people doesn't think about the life insurance. Uh, how is it is it possible through your company paying the life insurance from my paycheck or do i have to pay after maybe getting paid uh, how the process work when i when i have when i want to buy insurance by through my employer how is your company um providing the service or mm -hmm. i do have to go through the uh employer recommendation because mm -hmm. your company might be the best more than my employer what he's offering me so try to tell us about exactly how you guys are mm -hmm. selling your services so that our audience can at least understand and know what you guys and how you get the uh, uh, customers okay so uh Basically, if you have, if you work with a company that gives you life insurance, it's great because oftentimes it's free or it's very cheap. So good. But the things that we always tell people is this. If you leave your company, what happens to your life insurance? It's gone. Yeah. So you have no more life insurance. So it's always a better idea to have your own policy with you, right? It's like if you're driving a car, if you don't have a replacement, if you don't have a donut, another, another uh, tire in, in, in the back of your car and you have a flat tire, you're screwed, right? <laughs> so it's the same thing with life insurance. You have the one at, at, at your job, but you want to have your own. So if you leave your job, whatever happens, you still have your policy. So what we do is that even though a lot of people have the life insurance at work, we show them how to have their own policy so that no matter what happens to them, they're still going to be protected. And they can take that policy with them wherever they go. So all they have to do is sit down with us. We show them the, the options, the different type of policies. And then if they qualify, because you have to qualify for life insurance, if they qualify, then we can show them the policy that works best for them. Beside life insurance, what else do you guys provide for these people? Okay, we also help people with debt settlement. So anybody that has over $10,000 of student loan debt or credit card debt, we can show people on how to reduce the payment. You know, we can, we can cut the payment in half. We can cut the, the debt in half. Uh, we also do uh, retirement services. So people that want to invest, they want to save. They, people that have a 401k, they want to move over the 401k. People that want to protect the money. You know, because when, when the market is, is performing very bad, a lot of people are, are scared to lose money. So we show people how to protect the money. We show people how to save. And we show people how they can grow their money for the future so they can retire one day. How can you tell this person who already have a life insurance from his employer uh, mm -hmm. that it's important to have his own personal policy for his other life insurance? It's mm -hmm. kind of tricky when you say that because mm -hmm. he will be like, oh, I already have it. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's going to be confused on that point. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like this. Uh, if, you, if you're married, right, you have, you have a wife, you have kids, uh, would it be better to have two cars or would it be better to have just one car? Not two or three. Why two not? or three, right? Because if one car breaks down, at least you have a backup. It's the same thing with the insurance. If you leave your job, let's just say you leave your job and you go to another job that don't give you life insurance. Now you're older. And if you want to get life insurance, it becomes more expensive. 
So life insurance is better to get when we're young because the younger you, you are, the, cheapest, the cheaper it is. The older you get, the more expensive you, you pay. So I always tell people, uh, my, my, my children have life insurance. All of my children, 15, 9, and 3, because I know that now it's going to be cheap. So when they get older, they don't need to worry about buying life insurance policy anymore. So it's a good backup plan. And it's a good way for you to protect your family, no matter of what happened to your job. Since, you have the life insurance, you protect it. Since it's a good backup plan, mm -hmm. can I take it whenever I need it? There are policies that allows you to take some of your money back. Yes, you can. Because the money that you put in, it becomes like a saving account. You know, it's more technical, you know, I won't have time to go into that, but basically there are life insurance policy that if you pay into the policy after a couple of years, if you want your money back, the insurance can give you your money back. Well, let me say I live in New York and mm -hmm. Osman is in uh, Houston, maybe uh, Texas or yeah. uh, Austin or whatever city in Texas. Uh, how can I, uh, is it possible that I can buy from your outside? Absolutely. Or Absolutely. I still have to be in New York. No, not at all. I mean, I've, I work, there was a client from, uh, I was uh, helping a client from Louisiana the other day. I never met the person, the, the, the client in person. It was all online through Zoom. So we did the application online. I shared my screen with her. She was able to see everything I was doing. And uh, as long as they have a driver license, you know, they have uh, some type of identification cards. It's very easy online. It's all electronic now because we don't, with COVID going on, we don't go to anybody's house. <laughs> we do everything online. Tell us about the price. Maybe we will be interesting coming more and more. I can tell you that you can get today, life insurance has never been cheaper. Never, ever, because now people are living longer. So you can, there are policies where you can have a policy for $30, $30 a month for half a million dollars. You know, depending on your age, depending on your health, you know, so it so, depends on everybody. It's not, a, it's not a perfect price for everybody. It depends on your age and everything. So it depends on your age and how much you want to save. Exactly. If you want a $1 million, if you want to protect your family for $1 million, there's going to be a price. If you want to protect your family for $2 million, there's going to be a price. What is the name of your company? I want to know. The name of our firm is called People Helping People, PHP Agency. People Helping People Agents. People, yeah, PHP Agency, and the PHP stands for People Helping People. Nice. Good name. Why did you uh, come up with that beautiful name? Because, you know, uh, <laughs> we're in the business of, you know, helping families understand how to take care of the finances, helping family understand how to protect their loved ones if something happens, and helping fam families protect the money in case of, uh, uh, of economic, economic, uh, an economic damage. All right, guys, this is Osman still sharing what we have to do within a uh, situation of uh, losing your insurance, or if you want insurance, this is a good guy to contact and see exactly what they do. And if you want to know more about what they do, I think Osman will give us more at the end of this session. Uh, Osman, right now, beside doing this, beside doing the financial or uh, uh, stuff that you are doing right now, uh, including helping people, what else do you like to do here in the US? Since you've been here for a while now, uh, mm -hmm. being 18 years old, and yeah. now you're more than 30, I don't know. <laughs> what else do you enjoy doing here in the US? What do I enjoy doing? Well, that's a very good question. Um, I'm a big, I'm, I watch a lot of sports, especially basketball. I'm a basketball fan. Okay. So I watch a lot of sports. Me too. Um, Me too. Huh? I, saw, I saw, yeah, I saw the basketball <laughs> uh, behind you right there. But, uh, you know, I really like to uh, just be, be around good people. I like to eat good food. I like going out to good restaurants and eat, you know, and uh, go to, I go to the gym at least two, three times a week at least. And, uh, yeah, and, and I'm, I'm very big on uh, the African diaspora. I'm very big on, you know, helping. I've, to me, black people everywhere, you know, uh, part of the diaspora should one day come together 
and help each other, you know? So, so that's what I'm, I'm interested in. I'm interested in seeing the elevation of black people and uh, people of color. Many people, once they got here, resorted, got everything, education or anything, any wise intelligence that they may have, they don't go back to their country or mm -hmm. they don't even contribute to their uh, country. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking of doing the same business in Ivory Coast or any other country in Africa? Well, one of my goal is uh, with the company is to help the expansion of the company because PHP, we want to be, we want to go international. We want to go to Asia. We want to go to Africa. We want to go to, we already in South America, but we want to expand. And I would love one day to be able to bring this to Africa, you know, to help the, the African community, uh, especially in my country. So that's one of the things that I've always thought about. You know, that's part of my long-term goal. How do you interact with other people? Like you mentioned uh, um, earlier that uh, you have uh, like clients who speak Spanish, other languages. Uh, do you by any chance, one of your employees or you speak uh, other than English or French? Oh, yeah. we, we, we have agents. We have agents from all different backgrounds. You know, we have African-American, the number one, uh, the top earner in our company, she's, uh, she's African-American. Her husband is uh, Filipino. <laughs> That's to tell you a little bit about the diversity in our company. We have, uh, we have, we have uh, Hispanics, we have Black, we have White. We have, you know, all type of different nationalities and ethnicities in our company. If I want to buy insurance and I don't know, maybe English, I, don't, I only speak... Uh, my language, let's say uh -huh. Rwanda or Swahili. Uh -huh. Do I need a have? Uh, do I need to have interpreter? Do you guys have? Not uh, at all. We actually, I actually, one one of one of the agents with our company. He's actually one of uh, uh in in the in the organization that I was working with because I used to live in Austin. He's in Austin. His name is Richard Bukuru. I don't know if you know him. I know Richard. But uh, Richard, he's actually uh he just got promoted with our company about two months ago. Uh, to a field associate position with a company, Richard speaks Swahili, and uh, I, I went out with, with, with Richard on many appointments. We help many many families in the um, uh, in the Congolese community because he's from Congo, and we were able to help people uh, also work, working with him because he speaks Swahili. So we have so many different backgrounds and nationalities in our company that it's it's very easy to find someone to help you know, most clients. So that means they don't have to worry about our language no. or anything. No. We, we'll, we'll find someone. You guys are everywhere. We, yes, they don't, we find someone to help them out. All right, guys. All right, guys. If you don't have a life insurance, if you are planning to save more money on your life insurance, I think Osman is the best guy to contact. Like you see him, he been uh, uh, within this industry now for a while. Uh, uh, tell me, Usman, how long have you been in this industry? I've been in the industry for four years now. Four years now. Mm -hmm. Four years. I started in uh, I started uh, in 2016. I became licensed, and uh, in the first 30 days I was with the company, I was able to get promoted. And after that, I got another promotion. So I got double promotion within the company in in a two year period. And then uh, I was running, I was helping run one of the offices we had in, in Houston, in Austin. And then I decided to move to Houston uh, to expand here in Houston. Mm -hmm. People would think like, maybe you guys are looking only for uh, clients. How about working with you guys? Someone who, uh, who is watching us right now and might be interesting of being a licensed uh, insurance uh, agent, uh, how do you guys uh, work with those people who are willing to uh, be part of that uh, company? That's a very, very good question. And um, believe it or not, Desiree, uh, we are, we, with our company PHP right now, we are, experience, we are experiencing a growth that we've never seen before with the pandemic. We are recruiting more agents than we've ever done. Like for the month of, of July, we recruited twice more agents that we recruited last, last year in July 
because a lot of people have lost their job. A lot of people are unemployed. Let's say 45 million of Americans today are unemployed, apply for unemployment. So people are looking for an opportunity. People are looking for other ways to make money. People are looking for other different careers. And we've been able to work and help a lot of people, you know, working with us, with our firm, part-time, getting licensed, going out there and learning about insurance and helping families. So we're looking, we're always looking for people. So uh, we can't work, we don't work with everybody, unfortunately, but for people that are interested, they can reach out to us, they can reach out to me, and then we can set up a time to sit down with them and see if they can qualify for what we do. Let's go back to your point. Uh, American dream, you came to US having that dream. I get a uh, stock where you uh, get um, um, fired from your uh, first job. After mm -hmm. I graduate from college, then you start thinking about doing this. Uh, mm -hmm. Will you say that uh, now you are in a path of uh, American dream? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I see a lot of people, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. When, when they want to get into a, a business or an industry, they go into an industry that's been around for, the, they go to an industry that's very saturated. Especially, like, I'll give you an example. Everybody wants to do real estate. Mm -hmm. And then when you see a realtor, they always dress nice, they look sharp, and it's a great industry. But Think about it. Do you think people that got involved in real estate in the early 2000s and people that are in real estate now, who who's making the most money? Probably the people that got involved early in 2000 because now everybody has a real estate license. Everybody is real estate. How many people, Desiree, do you know that are doing real estate? Uh, if I, I ask you right now. I know like more than 10. More than 10, right? Yeah. And I wanted to get into an industry where there is a big demand. And, and right now in the, in, the, in the insurance industry, there's not a lot of agents, but there's a lot of people that need help. So I, I figured that this was the best opportunity for me because I can get in early before too many people get licensed and it's too late. So I feel like this was the perfect path for me to get to where I want to go. And uh, I'm excited about the opportunity. I'm excited about what, what's going to happen. And I'm excited to go out there and help family and make money at the same time. American people who live in America, they always struggle with the schedule, working schedule, kids, personal schedule. How do you guys manage or what, what will you say or what will you tell someone who feel like, oh, this job, maybe it's not good fit for me. Uh, maybe uh, it's not going to allow me to do what I want to do. Uh, tell us a little bit about your job. Does it uh, a job flexible? You can do, uh, you can schedule your own appointments and make yeah. sure that everything is good or it's something very stuck on uh, this job that uh, you have to be at the job at this time, at this moment. You know, what, you know how it works. Yeah. Well, I tell people it's kind of like... Um being a, a, a Uber driver or a Lyft driver. If you're doing a Lyft, there's no schedule. You don't have to be there at this time. You don't have, but the more you work, the more money you make, right? So we, the way we work, we know we work with a lot of people on a part-time basis. So uh, typically 15 to 20 hours a week. That's usually what most of our agents work because most people that work with our firm work part-time. 15 to 20 hours a week. We have trainings in the office. We have virtual training on Zoom twice a week, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday night, and Saturday morning. And that's it. The rest is just per your personal time, finding out when you have time to, to, do a, to run appointments online with clients, and then we teach you how to do that. But as far as the schedule, we work around the schedule. You know, For people that want to that wanna, that wanna go out there and do it, we figure out a way to work with the schedule. Tell us about how we can sell, how we can uh, maybe know you. Do you guys have a website? How can we go through the website? Maybe we register, we buy the policy there. Uh, what is the contact? Exactly remind us exactly where we can find okay. people helping so, people, Ajins. So to have more information about the website, you can just go to phpagency.com. And uh, that will tell you a little bit about our company, who we are. Now, if you would like to, you can set up appointment there, or if you would like to talk to someone in person, you can reach out to me 
you know, Usman Diallo. On, I'm on Instagram, Usman Diallo TX. And uh, I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. You search me, Usman Diallo. You tap Austin. I, I moved to Houston, but I still have Austin in there. I have to change it. But Usman Diallo, uh, and you look me on Instagram. You can, you can shoot me a, 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 te- a, you can send me a message. You can shoot me a text at 512. 512- 506-1381. That's my phone number, 512-506-1381. Call me, give me a text, and uh, we can you know, have a conversation over the phone to see if, it's, if, if what we have is at least a fit for you. Guys, Osman was able to tell us how good to have insurance, uh, insurance, especially life insurance, because people are dying in a car accident, you are sick, something happened to you, you are not at work, Maybe the job should, uh, the employer should cover you, but having this personal policy uh, will help you to understand, to go beyond what you were thinking. And then we also help you to go to your dream, American dream. Uh, I will encourage you to go there and contact them and uh, make sure you have insurance because uh, he's doing uh, something good. We are almost at the end of our interview. Uh, Osman, mm-hmm. uh, I want to ask you something. Okay. If you were uh, coming from Africa today, maybe let's say you, you only have one year, two years, because that's when you get to know like everything, you know what's going on. Uh, which, type, uh, which type of uh, life insurance will you buy for the young people, 30s or 40s, under 40s? On the 40s? Well, it all depends on, it all depends on your budget. It depends on how much you can afford. There is no one, one, there's no one side fits all, you know. Everybody's needs is different. And uh, for me personally, if I could afford it, I would buy the life insurance policy that I can get back if nothing happens to me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, is there anything you want to say that we did not cover? I know I still have one thing to do, uh, I mean, to ask you, but before uh, I go to that point, do you have anything that you want to share uh, with uh, the company that we did not cover, uh, but you want to make it clear so that people can know exactly what it is? Uh, not. I, I will tell people that, you know, sometime in life, when you, when you, when somebody gives you an information or you get an information from someone, we have a tendency to wait. We want to procrastinate. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. I'll do it next time. But at the end of the day, tomorrow is not promise. You know, I've, I've lost family members. You know, I know, I'm no, I'm sure you lost family members too. And I know what it's like to lose someone and not being prepared. So I tell, I tell people, don't, don't, don't let the procrastination, you know, stop you from making a decision that's going to be better for your family. So sometimes you just got to go in and make a decision, pick up the phone, make the call, do what you're supposed to do and, and don't wait and, and, until it's too late. That's what I would say. And to finish, I would say, Desiree, thank you for inviting me to Precision TV. I really, really like what you're doing. I've watched some of your videos on YouTube, your interviews, you know, uh, keep doing the good work, man. Your energy is good. And it's good to see another. It's good to see another brothers coming from the motherland to America and chasing his dream, doing what he wants to do. Because I've met you a couple of years ago, and you told me that you say, "Hey, I have my channel. I'm gonna do this interview. I'm gonna be big one day. People are gonna know about me." And uh, after watching all of you, all, your, all of, of your videos, I have no doubt in my mind that you're on the right track. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep inspiring the people out there. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Osman, what is the advice that you can give anyone who are uh, watching us right now? Like advice? Of advice. I'm, very, I'm trying to be careful sometimes when I try to give advice. And this <laughs> is why. I would say, find somebody that have the life that you want and listen to the advice only. Find what? Find somebody. Mm-hmm. that's living the life that you want mm-hmm. and listen to them. That's... Don't, listen, don't listen to people that don't have the life that you want. <laughs> listen to the, to the people that have the life that you want. Mm-hmm. Go, 
So if if you want to be the president of the United States, don't listen to my advice. I'm yeah. not going to give you a good advice. <laughs> but if you want to be if you want to be a a singer, you want to be a a professional athlete, find a mentor, find somebody that's done what you've done and listen to them and and let them show you the way. That's 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 my advice. All right, thank you so much guys. Find somebody who is doing what you want and then get his advice. I like that. <laughs> I think this is the best advice ever that I, I, I was able to get. I uh, thank you very much, Osman, for uh, the um, showing up to our show. And uh, I believe once we, are, uh, we want to talk to you again, uh, you're going to be available. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, reach out to me. Let me know. And uh, I know you're a busy guy, so I'm a busy guy too. We can always figure out a way to make it happen in our schedule. And, you know, anytime, let me know. All right, guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, this is a good time. It's a good time since we are getting into to know people. The story of Usman was very interesting, sharing uh, the story of him as a young man. Now he's in a, uh, his way on an American dream. Who doesn't want that? It's time now to analyze and do what you want to do, but especially think about your life by buying a life insurance from people helping people. And I am very happy that he was able to help us understand, clear all those miscommunication, misunderstanding that many people always have when they want to buy life insurance. Thank you very much, brother. You're welcome, Desiree. And, uh, have a good day, brother. Thank you. You're welcome.